Praise the Lord. We still serve God. He's still a good God. In spite of what's going on, the weather, change of weather, sometimes the acts of life, God is just still good. And I appreciate uh, the devotional service, Richard singing, and he's always inspiring the prayers these brothers offered on our behalf. We never know if they've done with a true heart. God gets the glory. Amen. We're thankful for that. Amen. Uh, I was beating Brother Denson on the golf course yesterday. And my phone rung, and I had to stop to answer the phone, and the score changed. I fell behind, but I did not concede. Lord, have mercy. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I Brother, Brother Peterson was making us aware that he would, he had to get on the road and things are safe. So we pray and want to pray for him. He's going to be out today. Uh, pray that he'll be able to get back in tomorrow uh, or late this evening, whatever his uh, situation is. Uh, we don't know the circumstances, but we just ask you for your prayers uh, as he travels. You know, when I was a young guy, I could do that. But if I, I couldn't have went moment's notice nowhere. I can't drive across town on a moment's notice. <laughs> I got to know in advance that I'm going that way because I like to plan. <laughs> but God is still good. Amen. Appreciate uh, Brother Denson for the scripture. And uh, I had just had a, a interesting call this week. In fact, I had several, but one in particular that was informing me of how we are doing with our media services, all the congregations of the Lord's Church. Now, we're doing this as a result of the pandemic. And uh, I, I kind of hate when people call and ask me of my opinion. Because my opinion is just that. It's my opinion. And I don't try to influence folk with their opinion. But uh, he said, what do you think that we're doing with uh, the traditional messages that the church usually gets. And I said, well, uh, you have to look at uh, two things. The church is still the church, regardless whether we're in a pandemic or not. Amen. And Jesus is still Jesus. Uh, I know that we're reaching a different audience, and we, God thank, we, we're thankful that you join us each week. Uh, but there is a foundation, and I, I want to kind of read a little bit what Brother Denson, now I'm going to tell you this, if you're in a hurry, I'm not going to be in a hurry uh, this morning, I'm going to take my time. Uh, let me read again some of what Brother Denson read, in fact, I, just for the sake of time, I may not even, I may start at verse 13, because here, here is something that's interesting. And I, I, I do have a title of a lesson, and I know you say, but now he's just going to knock around. Well, I am going to knock around. <laughs> I, you, you didn't tell the tale. I am. It said, but when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, now we all know that. How did that help us today? Come on, help us. We, we all know that. Help. He said, when he came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he uh, asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That, that is a great question. Uh, the, the answer should be developed, but we're not going to do that this, this morning. And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or other. Uh, are one of the prophets. But he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now for the sake of time, let me jump down to 18. I want to read 18, and I want to read verse 24, and then I'll, I'll give you uh, where I'm going to try to go. 
18, he says, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Verse 24, he says, And then Jesus said unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, what, 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 what that text, you have time tonight, if you go home and read that whole text, Brett Campbell, the 16th chapter of Matthew, what, what, what that does is it lays out a foundation for salvation. But what, but, but what the subtext should be is that even though it lays out a foundation for salvation, the subtext should be that it's free, but it's not cheap. Come on now. See, salvation is free, Brother Denson, but it's not cheap. Come on, sir. Come on. God's son gave his life. Yes, he did, sir. He shed his blood. But there is some things that are incumbent of us to be able to obtain salvation. In 24, Jesus said, you've got to deny yourself. Yes, sir. Come on. Pick up your cross. Cross, but he didn't tell you, share yours with me. Come on now. Yes, sir. That's what a lot of folks want to do. I, I, I don't, no, no, no. This, this part, God wants me to do on my own. Come yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Man, you didn't call me and wake me up. You know, church was a day. No, God wants me to do this part. That's your part. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. He said, coffee, deny yourself. Pick up your cross yeah. and then follow me. Yes. Yes. Now let me let me let, let me take my time because I don't want to get too far ahead. Yes, That's good right there. For years, folk have thought cross bearing was raising children. That's my cross bearing. It, it's a test, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. but it's not a cross. Sometimes cross-bearing, but it's being married. That's not, that's not cross-bearing. You know why? Because you didn't have to get married. <laughs> Your own fleshly desires say, ooh, get married. Okay, so that's not a cross. That was your desires. Some think, well, I got a new car and can't make the payments. That's correct. No, you didn't need a new car. God gave you that. Well, you know that old job is so toxic. That's my cross, Barry. You don't have to work that. You can go in in the morning and tell them, look, I won't be back no more. And watch them cry. They ain't not going to cry. They may cheer you. <laughs> but you know what cross bearing entails since it's, I, I'm telling you that you can be saved, you can be a Christian. Christianity is free, but it's not cheap. Part of the not cheapness is you got to bear a cross. Yes. Yes. But look, look what God did. God gave his only begotten son. Who had no sins. Yes. That was a cross. Jesus went to the physical cross. Endured and suffered great pain. Yes. For a sin that he never committed. For a wretch like me. That's a cross. Yes. And so when we talk about us. What's our cross? Our cross is dealing with our selfishness. Yes. Our cross is being able to lay down them things that we, we know we're not supposed to be doing, but we, something we know we're not supposed to be, we just can't lay them down. Some folk can't help lying. They'll tell you to your face, I'm lying. But they, and then they still lie to you. 
Some folk can't help but being selfish. Everything is about them. No, that, that's a cross. It's a part of your character. That's what you bear. If it's good, you, you reap. If it's bad, you reap. But it's a cross. And, 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 and we possess those. So when Jesus said, you got to get out of yourself. Go back and look at the text, how he was telling those disciples. They thought they had achieved something. He told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys. Peter thought he had achieved something. Peter's struggle, struggles had just begun. Yes. And if you know how to, that thing evolves, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Up to the point that Peter lied, he denied Christ. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And, and when I say these are, uh, it, salvation is free, but it's just not cheap. And anything worth enjoying and having in this life is not always cheap. Amen. 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 How many of you want to go to the Super Bowl this year? I mean, I don't, I don't have a team in. I, you, I know you. I figure you want to go. <laughs> you you want to go? I knew Reed wanted to go. Miami ain't playing, but him and Gerald want to go. <laughs> I tell you what I did. I was just messing around on the computer the other day. I did some research. The basic ticket to the Super Bowl. Is it worth it? The basic ticket, for Curtis, the basic price of a ticket is $250. That's, is, that, is that cheap? Oh, everybody says, no, no, no. Let me tell you. Those $250 tickets sold out. Just like that. We're reading. Y'all still want to go? They still got tickets on sale. <laughs> but guess how much they are? $3,500. Basic price. You can get some in the nosebleed for 15 See, it's not free, but it's so ain't cheap. Salvation is the same way. God did all of this. We had paid nothing in order for us to have a, a way back, to be reconciled back to him, to have our sins remitted, given away, in order that we could build a worshiping community, the church, and be able to feed off of one another in the church of the word of God. It's free, but it's not cheap. And that's the problem in this society. We take the church for granted. And that's why every once in a while we got to be reminded that look how much it costs to establish the church. That we take it for granted. We go because that's just the thing to do. No, we come so we can commune with God and have a worship and praise the Lord and give back thanks for what he's done for us. But let me tell you, let me tell you, get your Bible, get your Bible. I haven't got to the point I can't think like I'm like, I shouldn't admit that, should I? Because I know some of you think, I told you he was crazy. But in Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, but Paul puts this in context, what I'm trying to tell you about how, how we should make a of ourselves in order to be able to be what God wants us to be. Real recognizing. In Galatians chapter 2, and I'm again reading for you uh, in verse number uh, 17. Watch the, the language here. Paul says, but if while we seek to be justified, you on the line? Yes, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are, are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? That's an easy answer. Or is it? He 
He said, for if we build again, for if we build again, it's free, but it's not cheap. That's where that deny self-denial. Paul said, for if we build again, if, if we just act like where we just came from when we obeyed the gospel, if we don't make necessary changes to adapt and make applicable the word of God in our life, if we build again, these things which I destroy, I make my neighbor. Myself. Make who? Myself. I make myself a transgressor. I make myself, amen, a transgressor. Not, not, see, that I wouldn't have done the devil, no, he didn't say that. He said, I make myself a transgressor. Well, see, if, if Brett Coffey had, no, 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 you can't blame it on me. I'm convenient, but you can't blame it on me. He said, I make myself. A transgressor. Well, see if the, the leaders had to know. No, 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 no. You make yourself. Now watch. He said, for, those, uh, for through the law, I'm dead. That I might live unto God. Here's Paul's essence. And I like this. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. That ought to be every one of our testimony. That ought to be our charge in life. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In other words, I still have my daily tasks. Life is still real. I still got to make my livelihood worthwhile. He said, I'm crucified, but nevertheless, I live. In other words, I still have struggles, and they're real. He said, but Christ liveth in me. That's the difference. When you talk about bearing a cross, that's the difference. Because there's some crosses you can't bear by yourself. <laughs> but Christ lives in me. That, that makes the difference. That makes the cross a little better. When you trust the cross. Paul said, Paul still had, you know, he still had some issues. You know, before Paul was killed. He, he was leading folks insurrections, killing up people, putting Christians in jail, holding their coats while they stoned folk, bragging about it. I told y'all, better get it right. But Paul still had some issues. Every one of us, it's a, it's a daily struggle dealing with your cross. Not, not, not a part-time basis. I got it all together. No, 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 no. You don't have it together. But Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh. See, because some of us, we want to get in the church and think we are, uh, we're already celestial about it. No, 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 no. You're still in the flesh. You still in the flesh. And even at your best, that's why some folks still get angry. Now I know that's none of us at the church. No, nobody in the church gets angry. And the reason these things happen because we're still in the flesh. See, it's 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 free, but it's not cheap. You gotta give up some things. You got to add some things. Now I want to tell you, the things that you give up, if you don't add what's right, yeah, they, they, they regrow. You see what Paul said? Uh, yeah. If I build again. Yeah. In other words, whatever you give up, you know that you're, uh, that, that, that's honing you, that's shaping you to be what God wants. But you, when you give it up, you got to add something in its place. If you don't add nothing, it just comes back. So Paul said, <laughs> if I don't, if I don't add some righteousness there, I just build again. 
what was destroyed. And if, if going through this, every once in a while I encounter a sufferer, that's beneficial for me. Our suffering should teach us. Jesus suffered for us. The Bible says he suffered, bled, and died. Yet we want to be children of God. We are members of the church, members of the body, but we don't want to encounter no sufferers. You're going to have some suffering. Keep in mind, it's free, but it's not cheap. You're going to suffer. Some suffers you will do collectively, but in order for you to grow, most suffering that you encounter ought to be done individually. Sometimes in your darkest hour, when you're all alone, in fact, most, folk, most of us say that. I don't know why it happened to me. I ain't bothered nobody. Why not you? I ain't say nothing to them. I don't know why they're saying that to me. Why? I pay my bills on time. I don't know why they... That's shaping you. Free, but not cheap. It's shaping you. Shaping you so God can get you ready for the kingdom. You. Many of us are not there yet. And when we go back and look through all through the annals of time, the Old Testament, God was looking for a prophet there, Isaiah 6, Isaiah said, Lord, here am I, send me. Was he ready? No. But he understood that it was free but not cheap. You're going to encounter something. And those things in life will shape you. They shape you. They help you to be what you should be. Let me go. Uh, I don't, don't want to get too much happy. Bow it down. But information. Many of us, many Christians think that, oh, that I'm in the church now and everything should be subjective to, I shouldn't be subjective to certain things. There are those certain things. But I want you to look closely at this text in Matthew and then uh, let me give you a couple of points out of it and I'll be through. Go back to Matthew with me, Matthew the 16, where, where we read from. And let me just point out something quickly here for the, uh, the purpose of understanding the text and then I'm going to turn it over to you. God is so good. Amen. Amen. We there? Amen. Uh, oh, okay. Brother Crosby, uh, read, uh, read uh, uh, 1624 again for us, please, if you will, just for the uh, purpose of establishing then said, Jesus to, then said Jesus to his disciples. If any man will come after me. Now, let's put this text, let's put this wording or this scripture in its context. Notice what he said. If any man. That's, that's, that, that term is generic. It's, it's male or female. But if any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Now, self-denial is based on if you intend on following Jesus. That's, that, that's, that's the part that's going to cost you. If you intend on being what God wants you to be, then you can't be yourself. You can't be, you can't be, you know, because some folks, uh, they, some folks still cuss you out and say, well, that's just how I am. Well, you can't be that way, no. But, you know, that's just me. I, no, no, you can't be that no more. He said, if you come, you got to get out of yourself. You, you can't be the one who used to cuss folk out. Amen. Get mad Go on the man's job and four or five ink pens in your pocket. You can't write but once. But that's just me. I just can't. Well, you can't be yourself no more. You can't be carrying in people's ink being home. Huh? That's right. 
getting mighty quiet in here. Because <laughs> Jesus said, you can't be what you used to be anymore. There got to be a change. Taking on the word and what we do when we study God's word is we got to extract from that the things that we can make applicable in our lives. That's what changes us. Let me tell you this. You can't change you. Part of the problem, and that's what you've been doing, figuring on, I'll change that. How many times have we said that? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be different next week. No, you ain't. <laughs> Sounds good. You, you're going to be the same person. Child, I don't do that no more. Yes, you do. Just not as often. And, 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 that, and Jesus is, you got to, that, that's a part of the exclusive club of cross-bearing. Being able to get you out of the way. Because here's the first thing. All of us have our to tolerance level. Amen. You, you, you already know what you're, how much you're going to tolerate. And we'll tell you after a while. You drive that rate up so much on somebody. Get, you're getting on my last nerve. We'll let you know how close you done got. We're giving you a warning because you're getting ready to see the real us. But that's not self-denial. That's your old self. And that's easy to go back to that, isn't it? It's easy to go back to that. What about the new man? What a... Yeah, he's been transformed. He has a different character. His stature gets... Uh, now, let me tell you something and be real with you. You just don't achieve that overnight. How many times have I... I, I I'm not saying you. How many times have I said, I'm going to be different tomorrow? And I will be different tomorrow if I encounter different challenges. But if I ain't counting the same challenges, I ain't going to respond different. Now, I know that ain't going to happen to y'all, but it does, I mean, really, it does happen to me. But, but, but Crosby, on a, just me and you talking, I want my wife to get it. On, a, on an average, I go down to hard and get biscuit and gravy twice a week. You in here on an average twice a week. Or most times she take care of me. She she does too good a job taking care of me. So when I go down there, there's always somebody asking for something. Hey, you got a dollar? I'll just no, 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 give me a dollar. I'm I'm hungry. Can can you give me a dollar? No, no. If you're hungry, I, since I'm gonna order, I order for you. No, don't do that. Well, you ain't hungry. Anyway, the other day, Monday, last Monday, I gave the guy a couple of bucks. Got in my truck, drove back up here to the church. Forgot that the lady didn't put the coffee, or the coffee. Went back down there. The guy done forgot who I was that quick. Hey, let me have two bucks. I'm going to get something to eat. Now, I reacted the first time like I told myself I wanted to. I'm going to be different. But when I get back the second time and he done forgot who I was and gave me the same lie, I didn't behave the same way. That's the challenge in life. To move from
from one place to another. Not just move uh, uh, there when the challenge is not, but to move when you know the challenge is going to be the same. Yes, sir. Three, three reasons why we counter that. Let me give you these to you. Make it flat, Make it flat. Three, three, three reasons. They real simple. Three distinct elements that keep us from moving. You ready for them? Me, myself, and I. That's good enough. That's clear. Me, myself, and I. Nobody else. And so, and so, what we do when we when we bring that back, that elevates the cost of carrying or bearing our cross. Doesn't it make it a little tougher? Makes it a little bit more tougher. Finish out this text in Matthew. I'm at 26. And take up his cross. He says, and take up his cross. And follow me. Follow me. For whosoever will save his life. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. This sounds contradictory, doesn't it? He says, for whosoever shall save his life. Shall lose. Shall lose his life. And whosoever life. will lose this, 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 his this life. This sounds, hold on, hold on, let's, let's deal with this. Okay. Now, he, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Let me tell you, that all that centers around it. When Jesus say you got to deny yourself, all that centers around that text centers around denial. Uh -huh. If you if you if you ha do not encounter or do not make any effort based on God's work to deny self, you, you're going to lose your life. That's what that is. Jesus alone has the power to say. It was in his intent. God sent him from the close to glory to this old dusty earth. And he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you refuse, blatantly refuse, you're going to lose your life. That's all that's about. And so... In, 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 in closing this evening, uh, this morning, I want you to know that we, we, we have all encountered all kinds of struggles in this life. I made the analogy about the tickets going to the game. But nothing in this life that you consider free is cheap. One way or the other, you're going to pay for it. One other story, and I'll tell you this. I'm not, now my wife, I'm not, not going to be riding the car with her when we go home. We were sitting watching TV, me and her. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> and we've been talking. We're we going to get rid of cable. You know, cable is high. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm going to turn this way, Brother Cameron, because I think something's going to happen over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you this, Brother Cameron. I, I guess it's HTV or whatever. I, my wife enjoys it. I, I just sit there with her. But they had this little thing that you can order. And they tell you in the advertisement, here's how, here's how they get this. They say, oh, there are only 10 left. <laughs> you better get yours now, there are only 10 left. <laughs> so when they tell you this thing that you can gonna be able to get all these channels, you say there's 10 left, you thinking, I better get one of these. You ordered the thing. Here's the problem. You thought it's something you were going to get something for nothing. You didn't listen when they told you about 
you got to set this thing up with cable. And they say that operates all the TVs in the house. That, that's not true. They don't tell you that in your county there ought to be a tower that that thing can hit off of. There is one in Duval County. There's the only one. I live in Orange Park. Guess where that thing is? Over on the north side. They don't tell you all that. I thought I had beat the system. No more of this cable. I won't have to pay this gigantic bill. I can buy my own antenna. I get it. I get the thing. Excited when I got it. Cut it open, told Doc, we gonna get this thing. I said, I better read this thing first. We we got I think we got six TVs in my house. You need six different cables going to that TV, but only one of them will plug in that antenna. You can't watch all six of them at one time. You can only watch the one that the Cable is plugged in, because there's only one place to plug it in. And key, the key, is that you gotta have it sitting somewhere where it'll hit that tower over on the north side. Guess where that is? On top of the house. They had a little slip in there. If you don't like it, you can return it. I hurry up and fill that thing out. <laughs> Sent it back Friday. Got home yesterday from playing golf. It's back in the house. <laughs> it's cheap, but it ain't free. It, it's, it's, that's just the way life is. That's the way it is in serving God. That's the way it is in being a Christian. That's the way it is in dealing with issues of life. Everything that seems, if it's too easy, it's not worth it. And so I say, in closing, if you're here, you're viewing us this morning, Christianity is free. God has paid that price. Jesus paid it with his blood. He established a way for people like us to be reconciled. The Bible says, the Lord say, it's not his will that any of us should perish, but that we all should come to repentance. He wants to save you today. All of us here that are, that are in the body already, what we need to do is sure, sure that up. Let, let's not take that for granted. Because time is winding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in order for us to be able to be assured that we have made our plans to go live with Jesus, we have to make our peace calling an election show. Yes. Those of you that are on the, that's not members of the body of Christ, some folks say, well, you shouldn't say that, bro. But what, what else can I tell them? Yeah. Jesus said we should know the truth. The truth is what sets us free. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to hear God's word. Believe it. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus. And be willing to be buried with him in baptism. Amen. Baptism is what puts you in Christ. In Galatians chapter 3, 26 and 27, Paul said, For we all the children of God by faith. Many of you have been baptized into Christ have put him on. And then those of us that are in Christ, let me tell you something. At our best, we're going to fall. Amen. It's just our nature. Amen. 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 You ever got up in the morning, feel good, feel like you had a great conversation with God, got out of the bed, got everything going, was on the way to work, oh, left five minutes later than you used to leave, and you get up on the expressway, and the traffic is at a standstill. Now, you were happy singing, you know, because some, some folks think they sang gospel hymn, they go into heaven. <laughs> some glad morning, wind, That don't mean you're going to heaven. 
I mean, you're filled with your emotions about it. But you got up there, and the traffic was at a standstill. You left five minutes late, and now you only got 20 minutes to meet your objective to get to work. And these folks act like they don't care whether you get there or not. Not that they're not trying, but you're selfish now. I don't know why they won't speed up. They can't speed up. Ain't nowhere to go. You, you agitated. And that spirit that you had when you got out of bed, now it's slowly evaporated. You're not singing some glad morning no more. No more. <laughs> You're singing, if it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> You're getting totally frustrated. And it looks like that you have made a transformation from a saint now to almost a monster. You start beating on the steering wheel, blowing the horn. Can't nobody move, but you blowing the horn. No telling what else you do. And I say that because those things are real in life. You, you could encounter that in the morning. Yep. You could encounter that this evening. Mm -hmm. But our obligation, and folks don't like to say, oh, it's not a, yes it is. Our obligation is to stand up to Satan yes. and live for Christ. Amen. It's free, Amen. but it ain't you. And if you hear this morning, you recognize that Satan has been busy. And even if you're on our, on our cast this morning, you can inbox us and let us, let us pray with you, pray for you. Uh, take advantage of this time. Our lives are winding up. Time is winding up. We don't have as long as we did yesterday. And the whole time that we've been in this work, we've been working for a degree. Yes. So let's sure up our relationship. And you can do that this morning. It stands ready. Jesus stands. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone will come and open, he said, I'll come in, me and my father, and make our board with him. Why don't you let him in this morning? Will you do so? I'm going to ask you to come. Richard, we're going to stand, and he's going to sing. Some glad morning when there's life is over.